course, the professional racing circuit. Then to the Swiss Alps, uh, there's the regatta up there. Uh, in between, uh, he's raced with Stephen Murray uh, on his uh, Transpac 52. Uh, I also happen to race with one of the other fellows on, on this boat, on Stephen's uh, Transpac 52. But it's, it's an amazing story of opportunity uh, and an amazing story about team building. And so I'd like you to welcome uh, Chris Welch, who's going to tell us a little bit about the story. And then we're going to have a Q&A, and then we're going to show the movie. All right, well, I guess first of all, I want to thank you all for having me down here. It's been uh, very hospitable since I've been here, and uh, my first time in New Orleans. Very fun. I feel like I came at a good time, maybe a, maybe a week early. Uh, <laughs> but um, I guess before I talk about the morning light, I just want to share a little experience myself that I've had with the Leukemia Cup Regattas. Uh, growing up, one of my best friends, his father, uh, passed away, uh, not from leukemia or lymphoma, but from pancreatic cancer. And uh, we were kind of looking for something to do for him and for his dad in memory of that. Uh, he had just started sailing, and I had been sailing for quite a while, and uh, kind of looked around and couldn't really find anything that, that uh, interested, interested in us to do. And we found a little Kiwi Cup uh, up in Michigan, up in Detroit, or in Port Huron, to be specific. And uh, we got a group of friends together, and uh, we were all in college at Michigan State, and uh, conned someone into giving us their boat for the weekend, and uh, took it, and we ended up uh, raising, I think, the first year between a bunch of college kids uh, with a few parties uh, charging a little extra for beer. Uh, we ended up raising, uh, I think it was almost $5,000 the first year we did it. And then we did, uh, we've done it for three years now in a row. And uh, so that's when I found out this was all for the leukemia cup, I thought that was a very cool, uh, uh, very thing. I was excited to come down and do it. But uh, that's just my own personal experience with the leukemia cup we got. But as far as the morning light goes, uh, as Guy said, uh, Roy Disney, uh, so kindly for me, um, put together this idea that he had to send 15 young kids in a stripped out uh, TP-52 across the Pacific and train us for six months. And uh, so it all started with a application which filled out in, in the summer, I think, of 2006. And uh, I only found out about it the day before the, uh, the application was due, which was the night before the Bermuda race. So I was up till 2 in the morning finishing the application the night before I was sent the Newport to Bermuda race. And uh, filled this thing out, and I think there were 600 or 700 applicants, and I was fortunate enough to be selected as far as uh, 30 people goes, and we all got flown out to Long Beach, California, and we took uh, the Catalina 37s, which they use for match racing out there, and we had a sailing trial for, I think, seven days. And uh, at the end of it, which was a, a long day, uh, the selection day, they picked 15, which made it long, my last name being Welsh, they did it alphabetically. It was a very long day. Um, but I was very fortunate to be selected, and then the next uh, January of 2007, I took off from Michigan State University, uh, put that semester of college aside, and uh, went to Hawaii. And we got to live in Hawaii for six months and train. We had some of the best sailors in the world come in and train us. Mike Sanderson, who was the skipper of AB number one, which won the Volvo race uh, in the last edition, the one before that I just finished. Uh, guys like Stan Honey, which was his navigator, uh, considered probably one of the better navigators in the world. Uh, but a whole slew of guys who are some of the best sailors that you can find. And we had other training from North Sales, and uh, Peter Harkin came in, and we had. Uh, even even down to Yanmar came in, we uh, stripped down a diesel engine and put it back together. And uh, so we were very fortunate that we went to California, and the 15 of us selected uh, 11, of, 11 to go on the race, and we had four alternates. And then we did this race from Los Angeles to Honolulu. And uh, it was a great experience, incredible. They're all very good friends of mine today. There was seven of us down in Key West uh, last week. We all got together for a little reunion dinner and uh, a little trip to the bar afterwards. But uh, it's a, it was a great experience and has accelerated my sailing career uh, very much so. And I'm very fortunate that Roy um, unfortunately passed away in December. Uh, but Roy put that together for all of us and gave 15 of us the 
opportunity of a lifetime to go out and do something that, uh, you know, I grew up in Detroit. I mean, I'm not raised in Hawaii from Detroit. Uh, so it was very cool. Very cool and a, a wonderful experience. And now you have to sit through an hour and a half and watch it. All right, what was your position on the boat? Uh, I was, uh, for inshore regattas that we did, I was the mass man. And uh, during the Transpac, uh, as many of you well know, when you do distance racing, you kind of do everything. Uh, but I was the kind of uh, mid-bow, mass, and uh, trimming. It was my job, official job. Who, who, was, who was the most impressive crewmate you had? Um, as we look forward to the movie. Uh, well, the, the guy that we selected as the skipper, Jeremy Wilmot, uh, a kid from Australia, uh, has an incredible grasp of the sport uh, at such a young age, and that's why we chose him as the skipper. And he was probably the most impressive sailor uh, out of the out of the group. Any other questions? For yeah, I guess there's any questions. I have a bunch of them, but go ahead. I'm also going to mention to you that uh, Chris is going to watch the movie with us, and about every. 10, 15 minutes or so, he's going to move to a different table. So he's going to sit at the table with you while we watch these movies. And also, I'm going to encourage all the kids, if you want, come up. There's a big group up here. You can come sit up on the floor together, and he's going to come sit with you, too. All right? Uh, what's, most people in this room have not seen a race of that race. I, I can look to one, uh, maybe two other people in this room that have done a race of that distance. What's the hardest thing? Psychologically, in doing a race that's going to take that long. Well, in, in the end, it took us just shy of 12 days. It was, I think, the slowest uh, transpack on record, I believe. Uh, but one of the things, uh, you know, they have the software programs, we were using a program called Expedition for Navigation. And uh, in the little bubble on the side, it gives you an ETA. And I think about uh, four, four days out, it said eight days. And, yeah, all right, you know. Deal with that. And, you know, that'll probably go down. And uh, prior to even leaving, we were going to do it in seven days, break the TP52 record, and uh, it was going to be you know a wild ride all the way there. But uh, I think for about four days, it said eight days on that little bubble. But uh, I, I think the hardest thing for for us was probably being a, a group of growing boys and and uh, one girl uh, was the was the food. Eating freeze dried food for twelve and a half days wasn't wasn't the most fun fun thing in the world. Anybody else? I don't want to delay the uh, start of the movie, but anybody else have any questions? What, what's the distance of the race? Uh, I think it's uh, 2,250 miles from LA to the finish, which is right off the back. How old were you when you did it? Uh, I was 19 at the time of the race. Was it a game or an ongoing joke you guys had in the boring times? During the boring times? Uh, yeah, towards the end, mostly towards the end of the race, like the last half, basically, uh, was talking about basically the kind of food that we were going to get when we get there, <laughs> all of our cravings, and, and there's a part about that in the movie, but there are a lot of good cravings that we have. How many TV 52s were the Uh There were four. Uh, there was uh, Ourself, uh, the Morning Light, and there was Sun, Pot Tea, uh, Traitor, and Lucky. I, there was one guy on the boat who was a camera crew, his name is Rick Depp, and uh, Rick was one of the original cameramen from the, the, the Discovery Channel show, um, The Deadliest Catch, the crab fishing show, and he's also a, a very, very good professional sailor. He was the media guy uh, for the Puma Volvo campaign in the last uh, Volvo Ocean race. And then we also had uh, uh, an old sailing not an old, I guess, but a sailing catamaran that was converted into a power boat called PlayStation uh, that had um, the, the off-the-boat perspective that followed us uh, across and took shots of us and other boats around us uh, throughout the whole race. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I'm going to did they ever have to like come up alongside and like throw batteries or switch off gear to like... No, that was that was actually one disadvantage that we had uh, dealt with the other uh, TP-52s that didn't have uh, a few hundred pounds of camera gear on the boat. 